This entitled mum has revealed herself to be incredibly prejudiced against her son's new girlfriend. You won't believe what crazy reason she shows so much hate towards her, and what she does next will leave you speechless. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. I've seen a lot of crazy people in my life, but my potential future mother-in-law is the absolute worst person I have ever met. I, 30-year-old female, have been with my boyfriend, 31-year-old male, for 8 months now. For the first few months everything was amazing. He is the sweetest and most caring man I've ever been with. He likes to surprise me with fun dates and flowers for no apparent reason. The biggest surprise of all though was when I met his mother. I met his parents for the first time a few months ago. The first thing she said to me when I walked in the door was, Are you Jewish? I am not. And I'm not particularly religious. But I was raised Catholic. Once I told her this, it was the beginning of the madness. She immediately stopped talking to me and acted as if I didn't exist. I was extremely nervous about meeting my boyfriend's parents, so this broke my heart. I was determined to make a good impression, so I kept trying to connect with her. This was a huge mistake and I should have just let it go. Once we were all seated for dinner, she finally decided to try and make conversation. I have naturally red hair and she asked me if my parents have the same colour. I told them I have the same hair as my mother. Then she had the audacity to ask me, Does the carpet match the drapes? I had no idea how to respond and I just sat there stunned. Seeing my reaction, she said, Don't worry, I'll just ask my son about it later. I look over at my boyfriend who seemed equally as shocked, but he didn't say anything. She then started to go on about my hair being too curly. She told me that I really need to learn how to run a brush through my hair and think about my appearance more when I'm out with her son. Then when I didn't eat much at dinner, she gave me her version of a compliment. I was told that it was good that I was watching what I eat because it would be a shame if I got any bigger. This was just my first meeting with this woman. As soon as I got into my car, I burst into tears until I got home. My boyfriend was texting me and apologizing for his mother's behavior, but the damage was done and I told him I needed time to think. He went into apology overload after this and started sending flowers to my office every day and leaving me messages begging me to talk to him. I finally agreed and we went out to dinner. He told me he spoke with his mother about her inappropriate comments and he swore it would never happen again. With this reassurance, I decided to give it another chance. Fast forward two weeks to when he invited me to come to a family birthday party. This time I would also be meeting his sisters and grandparents. His grandparents and sisters were awesome people. They asked me normal questions about my job, family and friends. His mother seemed to be avoiding me throughout the evening and honestly, I was okay with that. I went to grab something from my purse and noticed it was not where I left it. I looked everywhere but I couldn't find it. I went and asked my boyfriend and he began to help me look. He then got a strange look on his face and he quickly went upstairs. I could then hear a lot of yelling begin upstairs. He came back down holding my purse after a few minutes and told me that we were leaving. Once we got in the car, I asked him what was going on. His mother had taken my purse so that she could see my driver's license. She intended to try and run a background check on me. He told me she had told him this earlier, but honestly had thought she was joking. I thought that it was best if I avoided any of his family functions for the time being. This worked out great for a while and he went to any of his family parties alone. He would ask me each time before leaving if I was sure that I didn't want to go, but I always declined. Last week his family had their family reunion and he asked me to please come with him. I was very reluctant, but considering there would be so many people present, I didn't think she would pull anything. When we got there, everything was going great. I met his extended family and got to chat upstairs with his sisters. His mother did seem to be shooting me death glares all night, but I brushed it off. Soon she came over and joined a table I was seated at with his sisters and some cousins. The conversation was pleasant as we were talking about his sister's children. His sister had a daughter who is 12 and is the same age as my niece. I then showed his sister a picture of my niece on my phone. His mother took a look at the screen and began to laugh. She told me that she hopes that if me and her son ever have children, that they don't look like my niece. My niece is beautiful by the way, and she is only 12 years old. What kind of monster attacks a 12 year old child's appearance? 
This was my breaking point and I went off like a volcano. I started to scream at her and told her she is the most evil person I have ever had the disadvantage to meet. I told her if I ever did have children with her son, she can be certain she will never meet them. Because hell is too far to travel to. I am not 100% certain exactly everything that I said, but from what his younger sister later said, it was epic. She began to play the victim and wailed that I had misunderstood her joke. My boyfriend came rushing over at this point and she threw herself into his arms, telling him I am a horrible woman and he needed to throw me out right now. He told her that wasn't going to happen and to stop making a fool of herself. She seemed to accept this for a moment and sat back down. She just kept sobbing that I just didn't understand how to take a joke. Then something in her snapped as she noticed something that my boyfriend was holding in his hand and began to have another meltdown. I didn't understand what was happening at this point and just stood there watching a grown woman pitch a fit like a toddler. None of what she was saying made any sense to me as it was mostly just incoherent screaming, but I did pick up on many derogatory comments directed my way. My boyfriend then told me we were leaving and told me to grab my things. As I started to get ready, future mother-in-law made a lunge for my boyfriend's hand and grabbed the small box he was holding. She then looked me dead in the eyes and said, You will never have this ring, you little bee! She ran outside and threw the box down a storm drain. Turns out that my boyfriend was intending on proposing to me. He had just obtained his grandmother's ring while we were at the reunion. His grandmother is completely heartbroken because now her ring is down a storm drain instead of continuing on in the family as she had always wanted. It's just sad when people are so selfish that they destroy the people around them that they're supposed to love and care for. I'm sure not all parents are happy with the partners that their children choose, but the reality is they're adults, they can make their own decisions. There are healthy ways to express your grievances without completely destroying the relationship. And if you continue to treat them like children when they're no longer children, how can there be a functioning relationship? This happened many years ago, but I still get a chuckle out of the ridiculousness of it whenever I recall the gall of it on cold days like today. To set the scene and give you a cast rundown, it's a bitterly cold Canadian winter and I, uniquely titled as me for the story, have myself a wee bundle of squishy new joy, baby, with many an appointment to get to in said cold and a husband who also must get to work daily. On this particular day in history, I get a phone call from my several years younger but still in his 20s brother, EK, which isn't particularly unusual because he made it a habit to call me and complain about any and everything in his spoiled rotten life. He is the precious golden child of my poor excuse for parents, EP or EM and ED respectively. All of them had long since driven me to move six comfortable hours away from their crap show, but they loved to rope me into their dumpster fire because family. Today is no different. You see, EK has a horrific track record with cars. I was given my old but reliable little car as a graduation gift after my distant uncle's passing some years before. It was fully paid off but never maintained and nobody in the family wanted it because it was, well, old. She was one heck of a reliable vehicle though and I loved her to death. It was also my only vehicle and an absolute necessity in my life. EK on the other hand was such a princess that nothing less than something paid for with someone else's money would do. They were offered a brand new car from my wealthy grandparents before graduation but opted to buy a beta with potential and use the rest of the thousands of dollars they had saved on modifying it. EK totaled it almost immediately. They bagged it until it collapsed, dropped EP's money on fixing it, never got it running again, and were gifted a second vehicle just months later from wealthy grandparents once again. Lately, EK has been calling me to complain about his second car. He was furious that our grandparents wouldn't buy him a brand new one, disgusted that it was a car and not a big tricked out pickup truck. Absolutely appalled by our grandparents and EP's greed. I'd heard it up one side and down the other since her first car. The poor thing, living with EP's without paying for so much as his own gas or cell phone bill, let alone rent, food or bills. The indignity of this sweet innocent boy having to drive a used car that he still didn't have to pay for. 
because he couldn't hold a job for longer than a few months and blew all of his money on booze, teenage girls, and modifications for the car he hated so much just to make it tolerable. I normally just laughed and told him he had the wrong audience because I'd been forced to pay for everything from necessities to scraps since I was 14 and was treated like trash by the same people spoiling him rotten. He didn't care though, he was the victim. I had it easy because I had a crappy rented apartment, a husband with a minimum wage job and a baby. So easy in fact that when he called me on that particular day, he had a solution to his problems. It isn't fair that uncle died and you got his car. What? I'd rather him be here than have his car. But nobody wanted it and I needed it for university. So that's just the way it went. You weren't even close to driving when I got it. Plus, grandparents have bought you two cars since then. Mine's at least 10 years older than both of those. Yeah, but EP should have known that I'd need it more when I was done school. They should have saved it for me and made you buy your own. That's ridiculous. But it doesn't matter. You have a new car now. No, I don't. Then he proceeded to explain how EP's inability to maintain EK's second car somehow led it to breaking some crucial part. And it was beyond salvageable. Our parents had already dropped thousands on repairing this car in the few months EK had been driving it. EK still wouldn't stop sporting and bragging the heck out of it though, so it followed suit with its predecessor and faced a woeful early demise. I tried being the responsible older sibling and telling EK that he needs to take better care of his crap. But I would have had better luck convincing a raccoon to join the church of staying the frick out of trash cans. It was as usual, everybody's fault but EK's that this misfortune had befallen him. It just isn't fair. I should have your car. I disagree, but we can't turn back time I guess. But you don't need it like I do. You live in the big city. I live in the small rural town. So I need to do a lot of driving to get to work. I can't find a new job if I can't even get there. Carpool with EP? They always offer to take you to your jobs when they work. But how am I supposed to see my friends or buy anything? EP won't drive me anywhere other than work. That's not fair. I really just need your car. It's basically mine anyway since I should have gotten it. Oh, you're serious? I have a kid. Husband uses my car to get to work and back. How am I supposed to get baby to their appointments? And how are you going to pay for the car insurance with no job? Big city has a bus system. You guys can bus everywhere. There's no bus here. I need your car. Me absolutely stunned. Dude, you're not getting my car. The bus is expensive. Plus it's freezing here. And I don't live at a stop. So I'm not waiting outside to take baby on the bus. Husband's work schedule doesn't work with the bus schedule. And even if I did decide to let you have it, how would you get to pay for it? The plates need to be renewed every month. It's almost $80. Where are you getting that money? EK smugly because he's clearly thought out this genius plan already and I'm surely going to have to go along with it now. EP were thinking of driving up there next week for a visit. I'll go with them and grab the car then. Or you and baby could drive down here for a visit, then EP can drive you guys back. I'd rather you do that because I don't really want to drive all the way there and back. I don't need to pay for the insurance either. Why would I need to do that? It's still your car in your name. You wouldn't stop paying for it just because I'm the one driving it. You're the one who's helping me. I can text you my email later and you can transfer me money for gas like once a week to make sure it's running and all that. But that won't go to insurance. It'll just make sure the car is running. I honestly didn't think I could be any more shocked than when they demanded my car to begin with. But to insist that I not only give up my only means of transportation in favor of paying for the bus for my husband and I, but also paying for them to drive my car for goodness knows how long, I was honestly too blown away to even be angry. I couldn't even laugh at the insanity of it. All I could do was give them a hard no, telling them again that that wasn't fair or reasonable and listened to them rant furiously about how unfair I was being until he called me a greedy freaking bee and hung up on me. Now this wouldn't be an entitled parent story without an EP making a good showing. And EM hates to miss out on the spotlight. While ED was busy dumping time and money into fixing EK's car after our call, EM called me a short while later just to talk and check on baby. You'll never believe what EK asked me for when he called earlier. 
He already told me that you wouldn't give him your car next week. Of course not. What are we supposed to do, bus? It's freezing and expensive. I know, I know, it's just, well, he planned it out and he was so sure you'd say yes. He put so much effort into figuring it all out and he was so hopeful. Now he's being so mean to all of us because you won't let him. Mum, that's insane. His plan was to take a car from a new mum and her newborn, have the new mum pay for everything and probably trash the car on the process. Would that make sense to you if that was anybody but me being asked to do this? Well, no, but you aren't really a new mother. You had a baby, yeah, but you've got a husband and a home and you live in a big city. It's a lot harder for other new mums I've known. And your brother had such bad luck with cars and jobs lately. Mum, I have a tiny apartment and... I'm just saying that you could have helped. You had the option to help your brother and you chose not to. He needs a car. You've made things so much harder on all of us because you won't help your family. What about you then? Why can't he drive your car? Your dad and I need it for work. We can't spare it. And with how hard your brother is on cars, we don't trust him with ours. And husband needs mine for his job. And I need it for baby. Plus, I don't want EK to wreck my car either. But that's different. ED and I need to support EK and ourselves. You're just playing house, but we have an actual family to support. This is insane. If you won't help them, then fine. But you remember this next time that you need anything. And I was hung up on again. I wish I could tell you that this ends with some justice or something. Like I said, it's been years since then. Plenty of time for karma to come rolling on through and give EK a reality check. Unfortunately, it never worked like that. I received weeks of flack for my refusal to hand my car over. EP, EK, and my grandparents all took turns sending me passive aggressive texts, lecturing me, ignoring me, guilting me, and whatever else they could think of to remind me how horrible I was for not giving EK my car. Eventually, EK was gifted with yet another new vehicle. This time, one that was more to his liking. That he totaled in a few months. In the five-ish years since this story, he's ridden off at least six or seven other vehicles. One was EP's, which ended up being picked up off the highway in pieces. The other was his grandparents. The rest all gifted to him, and not a single one of those write-offs were his fault. He still lives with EP's, and while I haven't spoken to any of them in a couple of years now, I hear he's on another brand new car, on someone else's dime, that's needed to be repaired a few times already. It's none of my concern now. Still, I can't help but laugh at the absurdity of it and wonder how the heck he thought any of it was going to work in his favor. Man, you'd think after like wrecking the third car, you'd be like, stop giving this dude cars. <laughs> Even if some of them weren't his fault for whatever crazy reason, apparently it wasn't his fault. There's obviously a trend here that always ends bad whenever somebody gives him a car. And perhaps the fact that he never had to pay for it means that he never takes any personal responsibility for his own property. It's always on someone else's dime. He's like a small scale Venezuela, slowly collapsing his family's mini economy. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.